Dear participants, dear colleagues, welcome to our today's webinar with the title Galaxy, a web-based platform for reproducible computational analysis. This webinar is organized by the Medical University of Graz, Austria, and it takes place within the framework of Fair Data Austria. For all of you who are not familiar with Fair Data Austria, a short note here. Fair Data Austria is a joint initiative of several Austrian universities in order to promote and facilitate research data management. Further information on research on Fair Data Austria can be found on the website shown here. My name is Peter Schaffer and I will guide us through the next approximately half and one hours. This is our schedule for today. And as you see, we have two presenters, both from Medical University of Graz. And as you can see, the analysis platform announced in the title, namely Galaxy, is presented by Maria in the second part of the presentation. But first, Andrea will give us a conceptual and organizational framework around Galaxy to see how all this is embedded within our university. And this framework is summarized in the cryptic letters shown here, CFCB, which stands for Core Facility of Computational Bioanalytics, whatever this means, she will explain to us. Oh. Now, in regard to the research data lifecycle, this means that today we will focus on the data analysis segment. And this will be seen from a mainly biomedical and data-driven perspective. And our presenters will show you how research core facilities operate, how they support our researchers and researchers in general, and how they emphasize reproducibility in data handling. So now let's get to the heart of the matter. And the first presentation is given by Andrea. Here a short note on Andrea. Andrea Groseli Strele is the managing director of the core facility computation bioanalytics, and she's the second deputy head of the Center of Medical Research at our university, Medical University of Graz. She's also a member of the network platform for bioinformatics in Austria and a founding member, member of Cybers Austria. And she's responsible for powerful computational infrastructure here at our university, namely the Mate BioNote. She will talk about this later on. And this computational infrastructure is due to handling huge data sets and complex analysis, and thus enables our researchers data-driven discovery. Now, Andrea, your turn, please take over. Good morning, Peter. Um, just a minute to show you my presentation. Hopefully you can see the slide, the first slide now. Okay. So, Peter, thank you for the kind words and your introduction in today's topic. A warm good morning also to you in the audience. As Peter mentioned, my name is Andrea Groselli Strele. I'm the head of the core facility, computational bioanalytics, and I will talk about our services for reproducible data analysis. And I will say a little bit about our HPC infrastructure with BioNode. And later on, Maria will give you a live demonstration to see how Galaxy is working at the Medical University Graz. So I would like to start my presentation by briefly explaining where the core facility computation bioanalytics is situated in the Medical University Graz. The organizational unit for research infrastructure has three departments. Biobank Graz, Division of Biomedical Research, and Center for Medical Research. The Center for Medical Research was established in 2004 to provide access to biomedical research infrastructure uh, for both uh, clinicians and basic research scientists who are working at the Medical University Graz. The Center for Medical Research houses nine core facilities. We have a clinical trials unit, then our core facility computational bioanalytics, CF imaging, CF mass spectrometry. Then we have also a core facility molecular biology, ultrastructure analysis, prototype construction, 
structural biology and the service unit. So what are core facilities? Core facilities are centralized shared resources that provide access to instruments, technologies, methods and services to scientific and clinical investigators. In general, core facilities uh, recover their costs of providing services in the form of user fees. And most of our customers settle these costs by their federal grants. Our core facility, Computational Bioanalytics, offers advice and technical support in the field of biostatistics and bioinformatics based on our users' needs. So here you can see the different services we are offering and we recommend starting uh, a collaboration with a counseling session. Here we can discuss the user's need, we talk about the experimental uh, design, discuss research question and we give advice regarding the appropriate sample size. If scientists want to learn to analyze their data, they can uh, book individual training sessions with our core facility staff. This service is a perfect solution for those who want to expand and develop their existing knowledge. And next to the individual trainings, uh, CFCP is also offering different trainings and courses at the Medical Research Academy. As you can see here, we are offering hands-on training uh, for Linux, uh, then we have Slurm workshops and we show also how to use and work efficiently our MedBioNode cluster and we are offering different Galaxy trainings. Galaxy is a open source web-based platform to analyze large omics data sets. And this is an interesting solution for scientists who are not familiar with different programming languages and who prefer to work with a graphical interface. Our core facility supports at the moment more than 300 users. We are responsible for Galaxy administration, but also workflow um, development. Uh, Maria, she is our bioinformatician and responsible for Galaxy administration, but also for workflow development. She will show you later on what is a workflow, how you can upload data, how you can use these workflows but also how you can share your results uh, to your colleagues. And the, the last service I want to mention is the data analysis service. So it's possible to outsource the complete data analysis part to our core facility and we take over, for example, sample size or power calculation, do the data pre-processing and visualization and it's also possible to uh, do the high level downstream analysis uh, together with our core facility team or to, to outsource uh, everything and we take these steps over. So, um, in summary, I would like to emphasize that there are three possibilities to analyze the data based on the amount of available time resources and um, available programming skills. So for those users who are familiar with uh, a common line interface with Linux, um, they can work with our MedBiolot cluster and with the R server and for scientists without deep programming skills they can book our Galaxy trainings after um, two or three hours they are familiar with the basic principles of Galaxy then they can have an access to Galaxy 
and work with our standardized data analysis workflows. The second possibility is that some of our users start with Galaxy to get first results and based on the quality of their data, it can be helpful to book afterwards individual training sessions with our staff uh, or to book high level downstream analysis. And as I mentioned uh, before, it's also possible to outsource everything. So here we typically start with sample size estimation and then go a step further to data pre-processing, uh, give you some visualizations and end with high level downstream analysis. So what are the collaboration possibilities? Our first priority are internal scientists from medical university grads. Second priority are biotech med members from our partner universities in Graz, University of Technology and University of Graz. And third priority are external partners. So if you have interest to collaborate with our core facility, please contact us, fry, uh, write us an email, and then we can meet and find out what are your needs and how we can um, assist you in your research. Here you can see that our core facility has a <laughs> has a high performance compute, computing infrastructure at the medical university Graz. It's called MedBioNode. And our HPC infrastructure provides one login node and a Galaxy node. Uh, then we have 10 compute nodes. These are CPU nodes and a GPU node and storage. Our central shared storage environment is based on a Ceph storage system for project data, a GPFS storage system for the user home directories, and a SSD-based NAS system for fast access to programs and reference data. We are offering more than 1,000 applications and tools managed over Conda. And usually our users are analyzing microbiome data, RNA-seq and single-cell RNA-seq data, as well as spatial transcriptomics data on MedBioNode cluster. We continuously extend our cluster with additional computing nodes and storage structures. So one example, last year we extended MedBioNode uh, with an Apollo 6500 system. This is this new GPU node and typical applications for GPU computing at our universities are automated medical image segmentation using machine learning techniques, simulation and model calibration and molecular dynamics. Our core facility is responsible for user support and cluster administration. The tasks are split between the core facility staff and the local IT department. And as mentioned on the slides before, we are offering different trainings at the Medical Research Academy. So we have different Galaxy trainings just to learn how Galaxy is working, but also for different types of data analysis. For example, microbiome data analysis can be done in Galaxy. Then we explain basic Linux commands, show the participants how to run tools over Slurm. This is a cluster management and job scheduling systems. And of course, we show our participants how to use and how to work efficiently with MedBioNode. And for those who are interested in the statistical program R, we are offering trainings for our beginners, but also for advanced R users.
So what are the modalities of access? Um, here we have three opportunities and these opportunities are based on the programming skills. So for researchers who are not uh, familiar with programming, they should start to work with our Galaxy server. As I mentioned, it's a web-based platform. Uh, then we have an open source RStudio server. Uh, it's a single running instance on the login node. And for our advanced users who are familiar uh, with Linux and CLI, they can have a CLI access to our Met BioNode cluster to start Slurm jobs for data analysis. So why did we decide to establish Galaxy as a solution for fair data analysis at Medical University Graz? It's a web-based and open source platform and it's really easy to use without programming experience. Since many scientists at the Medical University Graz are not familiar with different programming languages, we search for a solution with a graphical interface. Um, we are offering more than 20 standardized workflows and uh, Maria, she is our bioinformatician, will give you now a live demonstration where you can see how easy it is to perform fair data analysis with our standardized workflows. At the end of my presentation, I want to say thank you to you in the audience uh, for your attention. And I want to hand over now to Maria. One short jump in between. Andrea, thank you very much for this informative presentation on core facilities in general and your core facility on computational bioanalytics in detail. Uh, I forgot one important point in the introduction that is whenever you in the audience have questions, remarks, or uh, comments, please post them in the chat. After the live presentation done by Maria, we will have a Q&A session where we will call all those comments and questions from the chat and discuss them. Thanks. Now, let's move on to uh, the next presenter, Maria Durdevic. She's a bioinformatician at the core facility Computational Bioanalytics at the Center of Medical Research, Medon Graz. Her research is focused on the methodological advancement and comprehensive analysis of diverse NGS data. So for those who are not familiar with the term NGS, this means next generation sequencing. And she's cutting edge machine learning, she uses cutting edge machine learning techniques to find patterns in various diseases. In addition, she manages and maintains the web platform for reproducible computational analysis, namely Galaxy. Maria, your turn, please. Hello everyone from my side as well and uh, Peter, thank you for uh, giving such nice thoughts about uh, me. I hope you all see uh, the presentation I'm showing. Okay. It works. Yeah, I will just shortly uh, tell you a few words about Galaxy itself before I uh, switch to the live demonstration. Uh, why so? Because I want to emphasize that this Galaxy platform is not developed by me, so I'm just uh, maintaining it here in Graz, but it's developed by a huge com community who stands behind. So, as Andrea already mentioned, Galaxy is one open source web-based data analysis platform which at the beginning was mostly designed for uh, bioinformatics and omics data analysis. But during the time, uh, they also uh, realized there is need in the other fields for the um, such one platform. That's why they extend it. Now you can use it for chemistry analysis, ecology, climate science, and very diverse uh, types of data analysis. 
it's very easy to use and it doesn't require any programming knowledge since it's web-based application so it's quite intuitive and user-friendly as you can see but only you need to know is a little bit about the tools and the way you're going to analyze your data so behind Galaxy is also a huge uh, toolshed repository, which has more than 8,000 ready to use tools, which you can install in Galaxy, but it also gives you opportunity to extend with your custom tools uh, that your researcher needs. Why it's so good? Because it retains all your uh, histories or your previous analysis in so-called histories, uh, which you can rerun at any time and reproduce the same results. So that's why it makes your research reproducible, but also shareable because you can share your work uh, outside of the Galaxy if you want. You can share it inside of Galaxy to the users, or you can share to the certain group of people. Uh, as I mentioned, behind Galaxy, it's a huge community, which is mainly located in Freiburg in Germany. Even though the initiative of Galaxy started in the United States, somehow this community started to grow in Europe. And uh, they also maintain three very big Galaxy instances. One is main Galaxy, use Galaxy.org, then Galaxy Europe, and Galaxy Australia. But also, besides those three main instances, you have more than 170 Galaxy instances all around the world. Some of them are domain-based, so it means that they are specialized for particular type of data analysis. Like I mentioned, some of them are just for image analysis or climate analysis or the other type of data. Uh, they also provide very extensive tutorials that are available on their uh, training web page and also on their YouTube channel. So they offer you very different tutorials from for the beginners, so how to use Galaxy, but also for the little bit more advanced data analysts uh, that have certain knowledge in certain data type uh, analysis. Uh, so, uh, since there are a lot of already available instances, we anyhow decided to have Galaxy installed here at Medical University of Graz, which is accessible via galaxy.medunigrad.at. Why so? Because uh, the main problem <clears throat> with any kind of data analysis, especially if you use patient data, uh, is data retention policy. So if you use Ga a Galaxy at Meduni Graz, you can uh, be sure that all the data you upload and share at Galaxy remains here in-house and under your account. So it's not accessible to anyone else and also it's not shared to any cloud or some storage space outside of Medoni Graz. Uh, also, it's extensible with custom tools uh, requested for your needs. Uh, like, for example, uh, here we have huge microbiome community. Uh, that's why we embedded in our Galaxy a lot of microbiome analysis tools. What you also get here at Meduni Graz is fast local support. So for any problem or uh, any request you have, you can contact us directly and we are very quickly uh, responding to the users and also provide them support in order to meet their needs. If you use the other Galaxy instances, sometimes you have to wait for the developers because they can't support so many users and there is a little bit waiting time. Also, uh, when you use our Galaxy, you can easily share data to your collaborators uh, and the other uh, workers that work at the Medical University of Graz. So far, we support mainly users coming from Medoni Graz, but we are planning to extend uh, and uh, open Galaxy for Galaxy Austria. So for all the universities in Austria, that's why we have this domain use galaxy.at. As I already mentioned that Galaxy is uh, there for reproducible data analysis, how so? because we offer a lot of standardized pipelines. So far, we have more than 20 available workflows of pipelines de uh, developed in Galaxy. 
with standardized parameters so that every user that uses Galaxy can analyze the data in the same way. We offer different pipelines for engineers, quality control and trimming, for microbiome analysis, metagenomics, RNA-seq, chip-seq, genomal RNA assembling, and many others. So mainly focused on omics and NGS data. Uh, and this you can see on the graph example of one pipeline. So what pipeline is, is actually sequence of uh, certain analysis tools that are coming one after another and executing over the time. I will show you later also how that works in reality. How our Galaxy at Medoni Graz is built. It. So this is what every user sees when he logs in into Galaxy. So this is web interface uh, that interacts with the user, but also it's running on our a login node which supports uh, it is support with uh, nginx um, web server and that node is connected to our huge data based storage and also the other computing nodes where jobs are executed we use postgres as a database that communicates with the galaxy and the storage system and final data is stored on this ceph storage system while temporary directory and during the job execution SSD as SSD drives are used in order to uh, to provide you better performance. As I already mentioned, all the jobs are executed on our node. We have 10 nodes plus one GPU node and uh, jobs are managed by Slurm. So also Galaxy use Slurm as a job manager system. And before I switch to live demo, I will briefly tell you what I'm going to show in Galaxy. So first, I'm going to show how to get into the Galaxy. And if you don't have an account, how to contact us and create one account. Then how to import data and manipulate your data in Galaxy. How to analyze your data and keep the histories in Galaxy. How to create and use already developed workflows. Uh, also, how to create uh, pages where you can embed different Galaxy objects and uh, also write uh, like draft manuscript. Uh, also, how to use visualization tools in Galaxy and at the end, how you're going to share your data to the Galaxy users or outside of the Galaxy. So please feel free to interrupt me during the live demonstration if something is not clear or intuitive. Now I'm going to share the Galaxy. So as I already mentioned, Galaxy is accessible via galaxy.medunigrads.at. This is the first page you get before you log in. And here you have some important information that we offer, that we provide in Galaxy about retention policy, about the data upload. Uh, but also here you have our contact, so our telephone number and email address. So if you don't have any Galaxy account or you don't have MedUniGrad account, you can contact us and request one account. So we will then uh talk to you and see what you're going to need and how to provide your galaxy service for ones that are belonging to the meduni grads it's very easy they don't have to request anything they just need one galic when uh, meduni grads email address and they can use their meduni grads passport to log in uh, their account will be uh, generated automatically so just by clicking they will immediately come into the galaxy. So before I uh, continue to show you what are the possibilities in galaxy, I will just switch to one of the test accounts in order to not mistakenly show some of the projects or analysis I did, because there are also some patient data and things I don't want to share, and this will be recorded. So I will just use one of the test users and 
go with the further demo. So it looks the same like my account. So what do you have in Galaxy? Like in any web page, you have for this many options. Home, directory, so workflow, so all the available workflows that you have used before, some visualization options, options with sharing data. We will go through this, that later on, but you also have uh, one a very uh, important and useful link here. So Galaxy Help. Galaxy Help uh, leads you to the Galaxy support page from the community. Also, it gives you opportunity to go to their video channel where you can find a lot of tutorials, their community hub. Also, you have information how to cite Galaxy if you use one of their instances, the interactive tours, introduction to Galaxy and uh, development versions. Under user, you have also some standard options to change the preferences, to change the password, so or to manipulate through the histories, pages, and other stuff. I will show that later. Here, this button, you can find Galaxy training materials. So this is very uh, useful for the ones that are first time in Galaxy. They can also find tutorial how to use Galaxy here, but also uh, the tutorials about different type of data analysis. Also, if they're interested in the Galaxy development, they can find it here. And this is to enable you to uh, compare the data, I'll show that later, in the several windows. Remember, help button and the button where you have Galaxy training materials. On the left side panel, of this uh, page, you have all the available tools we have so far in Galaxy. So we have more than 1,000 tools that are available, and they are mostly grouped by the certain um, data type analysis or some uh, field you're going to use. So for example, in statistic tools, we have some statistical tools like summary statistics or to draw some scatter plots or heat maps, histograms and the other stuff. Or for example, metagenomics, all the tools that are related to metagenomics data analysis. From the right side, you have your histories. This is the analysis you are doing when you start first in Galaxy. So before you start doing any analysis in Galaxy, what I recommend to the users that are first time in Galaxy is this interactive tour for the new people in Galaxy. It's very easy. You just by clicking, you have three interactive tools and just by clicking on them, they will guide you slowly to the things I'm going to show today, but for the repetition, it's really useful and nice to have it. So if you just click continue, it will guide you how to upload the data. Also fetch the data for you. What you have to do is just read and go step by step. Here and it will guide you really through the analysis, through the histories and everything need. So please feel free to go through these three interactive tours. When you open the Galaxy, you usually have this history empty. Now we imported some data, but at the beginning it's empty. In order to keep tra tracking about the histories and analysis, you can always rename your history by clicking this on the edit button. For example, we will just or first history or however you want. I didn't mention that uh, every user that look into Galaxy at the beginning has uh, 1.5 terabytes of storage space and the availability of storage space is always shown here. Per history, you can see how much space you use here. So you have really plenty of space and if there is bigger project, we can always extend it. So as you can see, <clears throat> history was empty. Now we imported some data, but I want to show you also how you can import data by yourself 
to the Galaxy, there are different options to do that. So one is to choose the data from the local computer. By just selecting and starting, and it will be very quickly uploaded there. In case of bigger data, you have also FTP option. So there is here guideline how you can upload the data via FTP and the data will be available here that it's very quick then to transfer it into Galaxy. But you can also paste the link from website, for example, and then upload some data from publicly available storages or databases like this example. So there are three options to upload the data to the Galaxy. So far, we have now some data sets here available. Sometimes it happens that you upload some data you don't want, so it's very easy to delete it by clicking here, delete it. But be aware that this deletion just deletes data from your history. The data set is still available on the storage. So if you go here, you're always able to put this data back to your history. It's back. If you do this delete and you are sure that you don't want to have this data set, please go here and purge all deleted contacts. This will remove the data from the database. This sometimes helps if you fill up the storage space that you go and delete some data sets you don't need. You can also edit the data set by clicking here on the edit button. You can rename it, for example, it will rename. Or you can also see what is in this data set by clicking on the I button. So as you can see, this is one NGS data. So those are nucleotides, FASC, you see file coming and very well known for the NGS people. You can also import text format data and any other data sets. Okay, so we have some data sets here, but I'm going to use the tool and how I'm going to analyze the data. If you are familiar with the tools and grouping here, you can go directly to the group and search. If not, for example, we want to use tools for quality control. So if I go to NGS QC and manipulation, there are a lot of available tools and one I'm going to use is FastQC. You can also, if you know already in advance, you can just type here and quickly find the tool. This is how the tool looks like when you open it. Usually below the this main tool panel, you have some explanation and also citation to the tool and references. So if you don't know how to use certain tool, please read it here that you get a little bit more familiar with the tool itself. When you start the tool, usually Galaxy selects the files that are appropriate for that tool. In this case, FASTQ files are appropriate. So that's why you have option to use one of the FASTQ files we have here. Then you can set up the other parameters here, for example, change this long length of the chimeras and so on. Once you're fine with the parameters, you just click to execute and your tool will be executed. While gray, it means it's waiting in the queue for the execution, orange it means in running, and when it's green, it means it's done and you are able to see the results. So during the time when you have a lot of analysis, this history gets longer and longer. So sometimes you get lost between different files and different uh, tools. So useful thing here is to tag the tool or the data set. For example, I'm going to tag this as a good data set, just enter. And once I run the tool on this good data set, I will always have this tag so then i know that for example this analysis step is coming from this sample 
how to see the analysis results. So simply by clicking on the high button, here are my analysis results. I have, since this tool provides two outputs, so I have <clears throat> tabular option to see the data. These are numbers, but we usually prefer to have this visual or graphical presentation of the results, like we have here. Sometimes I want to see and compare results of the two samples, for example. That's why I use this option here to have uh, more than one window. So one I open here, for example, and one I open here. And I just move the windows left and right, and then I can compare, for example, what was there and what was there. Switching that option. Uh, when you start tool, you are able to put one file, but what if you have a lot of files here? If you have a lot of files, then you can select them like this by holding the shift button as well, or sometimes you can create them in dataset collection. I will also show that option to group them together. So by clicking this, now I have a lot of analysis steps, each one from each of the data set. Okay, so until this is analyzing, I will show you also how you can manipulate with the histories. In the same time, you can analyze more than one data set by introducing a new history here. So, and uploading data to the new history. I can then analyze more than one data set in the same time. And as you can see, I can upload much more files. Usually upload goes very, very fast. So this is also very useful because sometimes you can tune your parameters, so run the same analysis with the different parameters on the same data set. And then you can check which parameters are more appropriate for your data. So I have now much more samples and I don't want to see them because this history then looks very, very long. That's why I'm going to collect them and put in one folder, so-called, or um, data set collection. So to do that, I click on this tick button I'm selecting all of them and for selected, I am building list of data set pairs because for engineers users, it's very obvious that this is paired end data for the ones this is like coming from the sequencing machine where you sequence from two sides and then you have forward and reverse file that are called. What I'm gonna do, select all forward, select all the reverse, auto pair them, name the data set collection and just create it. And in a couple of seconds, data set will appear here. What I don't see, I don't see long list here of FASTQ files, but they are paired and they are put it in this directory together. Now I can run the tool on the directory or I can even run the pipeline on the directory. And it's easier to follow when you have, usually you have a lot of data to analyze. As I already told you, you can analyze more than one history and manipulate them, switching between them. So, for example, I'm going to now start here one analysis. And now I'm switching to another history, or maybe see two histories in the same time. So, here you have option to switch to the history, between those histories you have, or you can also go here and see history side by side. This is very useful because very often you can use the same data and instead to upload the data all the time, you can just drag and drop data from history to history, like I'm gonna do now. So I have my data in this history and then I can analyze it. Be careful because if you delete this history, then this data set is not available anymore. So when you do this, 
please be careful with the deletion. So this is I'm gonna, how I'm going to manipulate or switching between the histories. And as you can see, I can see different histories or I can analyze them in the same time. So if I want to delete history, it's again very easy. You just go here and use the button to delete history. I won't do that this time, but this is sometimes if you don't need something, then you can just delete. Second very useful option here, uh, beside all those options here, copy or do something else, is to share or publish this history. So if I do analysis for someone else, for some user of Medical University Graz, and I usually want to share the results to the user, I just go here, and I have three options to share it. So to make it accessible via this link. So if I copy paste this link to the user, only that user that has the link can see the data, but also some other user that potentially get the link can see the data. And if I don't want that, I can share the history to the individual user, that user that exists here, for example. Let me see. By typing just email address or And now this history will be shared just to me. Or you can make this history also available for everyone if you want. So all the people that can access the galaxy can he see this in published histories. So this is if you want to access, it's here in the under shared data. So this is how to share, but what if someone else shares data to you? To access shared data by you, you just go here and history is shared by me, here, shared to me. So it's here. You can then view this history, copy or unshare. If you want to work on that history, please copy it. It's safer because everything you do on that history, it won't ruin the analysis that someone else before you did it. Okay, this was an empty history that was shared, but in case that there is something, so make copy and work on the copy before you go further with the analysis. I will now switch to another, some of the another histories. like for example, this one. So we were mentioning also workflows. What are the workflows? As I said, workflows are nothing else than the list, connected list of the tools that are used to uh, give you a provider some analysis. If we go here under shared data and workflows, we can find those workflows that are mostly developed by us and shared to you. So they are ready to use and at any time you can use them. For example, we can do this workflow for quality checking by clicking here and importing. Once we import, it's in our, so we can start using this workflow. It's here. Sometimes it's also useful that you see how this workflow looks like, or maybe you want to edit some parameters. It's very easy to go here and edit. And as you can see, it's very simple connection of the steps that are coming one after another for the execution. You can always add new data if you want here and just connect where it's possible, for example, if you're familiar or just leave it as it is. 
Once you're satisfied with the, uh, with the pipeline, you just go here to run it. So uh, as in the with the tool options, Galaxy also takes care about the input data that are possible to use here. So that's why it gives you option only the data that are possible to use. This time we will use this data. So to do the quality checking on several data sets. And this is how workflow is actually invocated. So here are the tools that are running and this step is waiting for this one to be finished. So that's good to have workflows because you can run a lot of steps in the same time and Galaxy will take care about which one comes first and which one comes second. So you can just run pipe, pipeline, close the browser, go have a coffee and after some time you can come and see your results. Sometimes it happens also that some tools are not working. So let's see what to do in such case. It can happen due to uh, wrong selection of the data you're going to analyze. Sometimes it's because of the tool itself. So there are a lot of things that can uh, be problematic. This is waiting. Maybe find some another that is faster because it's going to wait. Ah. I think it will be, it will start soon. So sometimes if it, something gets stuck here, you can always refresh history by clicking refresh here or if some of the data sets are waiting for execution, you can always go here to resume the jobs that are coming after. And for example, the jobs that are stuck goes to resume model and then they'll be executed further. Until we wait to get red option here, maybe I can talk a little bit more, more about workflows. So as uh, with the histories, you can also share the workflows to the users, the same manner. So you can share to everybody that use Galaxy. You can share it also to the certain user via link or share it via email. I think if you don't want uh, that someone else sees your results or sees your uh, workflow, the best option is always to share with the single user. Sometimes when you analyze the data and you have all analysis steps in your history, and for example, the another data set is coming and you want to use the same steps to analyze that data, you can then easily export workflow out of that history by clicking here and extract workflow. And then name it my workflow you can also select or unselect certain tools or uh, data that you don't need and just create the workflow so at any time you can edit or just run if you go to edit maybe we can see how this workflow looks like so the same option like before we did and this is very very useful and really provides you reproducible data analysis so what you perform on one data set, you can again perform it on another similar data set with the same parameters you, you have set it up before. So since I didn't have any changes, I'll just leave the page and see if we have error message or it's still waiting to run. Okay, it's still waiting to run. Uh, until that, until we get this error message here that I show you how to debug your data, maybe I can also go further and show you uh, the other options of Galaxy. So one of useful options is uh, also to create the pages. 
sometimes you want to write also the analysis step to describe them, to, to write the parameters that you have used. So it's very use, easy to do that. And you go to the users and then pages. And here you can create the page by just adding new page. So name it test. You always have to fill up all the fields and be aware that it's Linux behind, so it accepts just small letters, so no capital letters and no any special character. And select to be HTML because it's more friendly for usage. So page is created here and we want to add the content. So edit content. Looks like this. So you can add different paragraphs like headers. Mark, header. You can also import the pictures, import the tables. Uh, some links, but what is why it's so good because you can also insert the link to the Galaxy object. For example, I want to insert link to this history, or I can even embed the entire history or workflow. So instead to write all the analysis step, you can embed the workflow in, and workflow will be. Uh, because this workflow is not accessible to you. Maybe the other one, take this one. Okay, some problem. Or let's try with the history, for example. Embed and just save it. After the saving, if you go to the pages, you can always then see what you embedded. And yeah, for example, we embedded here complete galaxy history. And just by clicking here, you can see the results, you can see the steps, you can add text. So once you describe everything you wanted, you can then share this page to everyone or to certain user to collaborators so they can see and import then those uh, important informations into manuscript for example into materials and method page and so on so this is also very useful until we still wait for this to finish i can also show you the options how you can visualize your data in galaxy for that purpose, I have prepared one of the uh, histories where I have several um, files which are which you can uh, visualize with the different tools in Galaxy. So if you just go here and access the histories that are shared, so this is in the presentation data. Access it here. So those are those several, and I will import it into one of my histories. So imported data is here. So for each of the visualizations, you need appropriate data type. Usually the users that are going to use Galaxy, uh, they already know which data type they need and how they're going to visualize. Also, Galaxy recommends you which tools are appropriate for the data set to visualize. So here we have some protein structure file. And if you just go here to the visualize, it will provide you this editor. This is just to edit the text. It's not that useful but you can also do that. But there are two visualizers that you can use to visualize your protein structure. So let us try one.
and here you can see it's interactive and you can see the protein structure. Also, we can try the another one. Here they are. You can also change some options here to have the different quality to export it and to save it. Once you save it, it goes here under uh, user and then visualizations. So all the saved visualizations go under user and visualizations. Let us also try some of the others. For example, this one, we can build certain graphs like this or some protein alignment. So it's really for a different type of analysis from the static protein structures to the protein alignment. Um, phylogenetic trees, you can also RNA structures, for example. So here, here you see, uh, this is phylogenetic tree. We have different options like this one again it's interactive and provides the option to edit so as you can see there are a lot of options and a lot of things you can do in galaxy so not only analyzing ngs data let us try uh, the other history to see if our data out. Oh, this is running now and most probably we will get some error message here then I can show you things I promise. In time I can also show you that there are also tools for the other fields like for example for statistics so not only NGS data you can also do some statistical analysis like principal component analysis just do summary statistics and so on. We also have some tools for um, machine learning just trying to find and those are actually nothing else than embedded tools coming from very very well known uh, Python library scikit-learn if we just type uh, or random forest for example should be somewhere here Yeah, for example, classifiers or regressors for regression analysis. So we have really, really different options. This is still running. Let me see if I maybe have somewhere um, options where I have the error message just to show you how to debug that. Ah, here it is. For example, one example. And it's error. If you click here, there is this small icon here for error and debug. And click clicking shows you that some module is not appropriate for this type of data. Sometimes you can solve it just by clicking here, rerun the tool and select appropriate data set. Or if you don't know what is pr the problem, you can just click here, type your email address, and the problem you are facing, whatever, and just report. And this will be reported to me. And then I'll be able to see what are what is the error message and contact you once it's fixed. Uh, also, what if you want to download something for, from Galaxy, I didn't show you that option. So you can also have this download button where you can easily, for example, here, download the data set or results. It's very simple and usually fast. If you want to download the history, there is also option to extract complete history export history to file so this will compress all the analysis steps this will take some time because it has to compress it and so 
is the option. Okay, it just generated. So it will generate one uh, compressed directory and download it locally to your computer. It takes sometimes a little bit more time, and especially like now, the server is busy. It can provide you also certain errors. So it depends. Sometimes uh, it takes some time. Sometimes it's also a little bit tricky. But for any time, at any time, you can download the data set you want. And with that, I can maybe conclude this live demonstration and leave you some time for questions that are raised during the live demonstration. Maria, thank you very much for a nice presentation and the amazing live demo. Uh, at several points, you managed that from your point of view, Galaxy is somehow easy to understand and easy to handle. <clears throat> but from my point of view, I can promise you, when you see the interface for the first time, you're knocked out, at least I am, and uh, it's not self-explainable at all to me. So could you spend a few words on how fast people get familiar with Galaxy and how they do it? What we usually recommend before you even start with the Galaxy is to come to us and uh, have the training with us. Before, if you start using Galaxy in a wrong way and you starting to get error messages, you will give up Galaxy and you will never ever come back again. <laughs> so <laughs> that's sure. why, yeah, that's why we usually recommend that they uh, contact us for the training. Those trainings are for free. And we go, we have also a uh, group training or one-to-one -one trainings. We go slowly, step by step. We discuss about certain things and we really try to help users to get familiar with the Galaxy. Once user is familiar with the Galaxy, then we jump into the real data analysis and trying to answer the questions and help user how to analyze certain data type. So we are introducing the data type, introducing the tools that the user is going to use, help him to build the first history, to build her uh, first workflow. And then when user is familiar with the Galaxy, he can continue using it independently. So can you estimate how many people which go into your courses stay with Galaxy and how many of them will drop out? Can you estimate it? Oh, ah, depends. <laughs> because some, some of them, they uh, go to Galaxy or, or go to my training. And then uh, since they are at the beginning of PhD, for example, for the, the students, uh, they usually don't use Galaxy. And then when it comes for the data analysis, usually it's uh, end of the PhD, they come again and have again training. So. It's really hard to estimate, but let's say that 30 percentage at least they continue using Galaxy. Thanks. We now have to try to keep our promise to answer all the questions in the chat, and we have already three questions. So the mm -hmm. first one is the first one is a tough one. If I finished all my analysis, can I download all my work done and take it with me? And can I work with this download somehow without using Galaxy? Yes, of course, as I said, you can download the data set. Single data set, or you can download the entire history. And then you can use, for example, depends what tool provides you as the output. Uh, this raw data or those tables and analyze it in SPSS, analyze it in R, however user wants. Okay, thanks. The second um, question. Maybe before you jump to the second question, uh, one another uh, thing, because you're also able to download the workflows from the other Galaxy instances and then import in our Galaxy. Sometimes workflow will work, but sometimes not, because not all the Galaxy instances uh, have the same tools available and same version of the tools available. So in such case, if they import or find some workflow that is useful for them someone else, somewhere else, they can also contact us so we can make it work together. Okay, thanks. So the second question is, is it possible to have some CFD simulation programs like 
ANSYS running on Galaxy. I don't know if you're familiar with this term. Uh, I'm not familiar with those simulation programs. Uh, they are used to simulate what? Maybe a little bit more information. Well, CFD, if I got it right, is uh, computational fluid dynamics. Yeah, so far I'm not aware. I'm not aware, so for that, maybe we can consult also the Galaxy training page here. So whatever is available here, we can also uh, have it in our Galaxy. I don't see it. Uh, also, someone has to show me the tool. If the tool use can be used by uh, command line only, then it can be embedded in Galaxy, in our Galaxy as well. So what is important, the tool can run via command line. So we can then build the wrapper, integrate it in Galaxy, and then someone can use it, no problem. That's why I said it's benefit that we have Galaxy here in house because we can always uh, implement and integrate tools that are not available or ready for installation. Sounds very promising to me. Yeah. So it is because we, we also support, for example, this metagenomics and microbiome community with the tools that are not available to, to download and install in other Galaxy instances. So the next question is, what about running my own Python code? You can, if this Python code is written in such manner that you can run it from command line, as I can said, I can build the wrapper and embed it in Galaxy. Okay. So I think we have an extension of the first question right now, and this is, mm -hmm. how is the, how does the history look like? if it is exported? It takes some time. Uh, it's compressed into directory. When you open directory, maybe I can show you the tool. Yeah, so uh, you don't see most probably, I have to reshare. I will share the, the entire screen. So do you see now? Yeah. Yes. So usually it's compressed under the directory. You just have to uncompress it. Wrong button. Okay. Uncompress it. So it's zipped, nothing else. And when you go in, you usually have uh, tool by tool and step by step again, sometimes compressed. So here is the data, for example, you can, it's a lot of time compressed in order to decrease the size and easy up the download. For example, so here you have also your data. So you just have to go through the directories and you are able to see your results. As you can see, you can see it outside of Galaxy. Okay. All right. Look very nice to me. Another question from me. Um, I, as the old guy, am used to the to do my analysis step by step and with my own hands. So, for me, it's a little bit strange just to run a pipeline or a workflow and to rely on what's going on there. So, how reliable are those workflows made by others? Uh, usually we create the workflows based on already published SOP, so standard uh, operating procedures or uh, publications where the workflow is verified and uh, already accepted by the community. Like, again, to mention these uh, microbiome pipelines. So uh, some of the parameters for which we know that they have to be like that, we set it up in advance, but sometimes we leave some parameters open because you can't set up all the parameters in advance. Some of the parameters are dependent on the data sets itself. So those parameters we leave open to user to set it up by itself. Uh, also, for the ones that are new in Galaxy, we always recommend to run step by step and get familiar with the steps in the pipeline. So he or she can open the pipeline, see what are the steps in this view option, and then just run these steps one by one. 
And once it gets more familiar with the parameters there, with uh, the options that are available, then it's very safe to run it as a pipeline. But all the pipelines yeah, that are published here and available, they are verified uh, and already accepted in the community. Thanks. Uh, so just one, one note, also I can't guarantee for the other pipelines because there are pipelines uh, developed by the users. So I can guarantee just for pipelines that we developed and shared, but for the others, sometimes someone just trying some pipeline and publish it. So you use it on your own responsibility. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We have a few more minutes, so if there are any more questions in the chat, please. If you have questions, ask them in the chat. So it looks like you have answered all the questions. So, Galaxy is very clear now. <laughs> ah. Ah, the user says, I think I will have a call with Maria. So we're no looking problem. forward. We are looking forward to a call. And she offered she offered that she can be called and uh, definitely we, we really emphasize to everyone to, to start to call us in advance, discuss with us to see if Galaxy is appropriate platform for you, to see if you have tools to prepare the platform for you, if there are tools uh, that are not available, and then we go through this together. Sounds like a great service. So thanks a lot. Yeah, we try to help people in order to use Galaxy in a proper way. Otherwise, then there is no point having Galaxy. So we have thanks from another user. Thank you very much for the interesting demo. Oh. Thank you. So if there are no more questions, I will take over the presentation right now. Maria, thank you very much again. You're welcome. Now, the last point is to point you to the next event of uh, the Fair Data Austria webinars. And this is a webinar in German entitled Energieverbrauchsdaten an österreichischen Universitäten. And it takes place on the 22nd of February this year, starting at 10 o'clock. So, thanks a lot. Uh, for all the presenters, thanks a lot for the audience, for all your questions and uh, working together. Have a nice day and we'll end the webinar here.